the survivors from yesterday's session, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> so what I thought I would do um, in guise of an introduction is, is try to tie up uh, some of uh, some of the stuff uh, that we have uh, dealt with yesterday and um, I really yeah, do a little bit of a hash, as we say, uh, a little bit of a summary, a, 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 a living summary that will lead towards uh, the discussion around uh, a funding that will follow uh, shortly. So kind of a, a, a way of um, yeah, reactivating a little bit the flow that uh, uh, the sphere is generating for itself. Um, uh, mainly the kind of choreography that we set up for ourselves in between the different labs. Uh, Catherine, you were there for the first one. Uh, so the first lab was organized by Joel Mason here present and uh, Jay Gilligan. And uh, yeah, I, I, I want to go back to that. I will share my screen uh, because there were a couple of fragments that were generated during that lab that were packaged and sent to us, us people in the future of two weeks afterwards. So I, I will say a few things uh, about that and then move on to uh, a few general ideas, kind of like participating in uh, what Jim and I tried to do yesterday, which is summoning a digital soul uh, for ourselves, uh, which we mean in, in many different ways. And, and basically, um, I would like to put a little bit of flesh on concepts that we use almost as like a local jargon for ourselves, but we mean uh, all of it. Uh, for instance, the idea of differential skin in the game, uh, which is a variation on Nassim Taleb famous skin in the game. And, uh, and also the question of fractal ownership, which we detailed more uh, in technical way yesterday, like the possibility of organizing around uh, fractal ownership for, for artist collectives, uh, but like, like reactivate some of that through a couple of references that have been there to me over the years. Uh, I mean, Joel will recognize a couple of them uh, because they've been uh, thinking, uh, grounding elements uh, over the last few years. And I think that they uh, suggest or signal uh, what I like to call uh, um, a derivative art co co collective formation or like just what Randy Martin calls a social logic of the derivative. And derivative uh, can mean many things, but here it's almost a synonym of uh, differential uh, belonging in becoming. You can take it from there. I mean, derivatives reference uh, on the financial realm to uh, derivative contracts, which is a special type of financial tool uh, instrument. But in the context of uh, the spheres work, uh, let me say maybe that the general perspective from where I'm from, like in trying to think uh, what we can do collectively with these new tools for collective fractal ownership, uh, there's this idea of transforming uh, the logic of risk management, which is dominating legacy finance world, and transform the logic of risk management into um, um, collective metastability. Uh, like a way of being, a way of uh, risking and speculating together, a way of having differential skin in the game that actually reverts some of the financial powers and, and transform our relation to risk and make appropriate uh, that, uh, that power that has been uh, developed in the financial realm. And, and for many reasons, we're in a, a wider or larger process of trying to reclaim some of that power and what Jem yesterday presented in terms of uh, liquidity bootstrapping around the Spectre proposition, I think personally was absolutely brilliant because that, that me mechanism is one way to actually um, uh, concretize what it means to move from a logic of risk management that individualize uh, everyone into a, a collective metastability arrangement, which stimulates new forms of uh, coming together. So this is roughly what I'd like to open up in, in the next, let's say, 15 minutes. And Jem, uh, you jump in at any time. Uh. Yeah, like I, about just what, what you said now, uh, just which is kind of the overarching theme around uh, sort of taking control of the, uh, not control, but uh, 
taking a designer's approach towards uh, the systems that we are exposed to. Uh, and I think Stephen yesterday observed it quite well that, you know, this is a game uh, or this is like combinations of games. And it's actually referred to in uh, category theory or advanced game theory as, uh, yeah, compositional game theory, uh, compositional games. Um, but he, yeah, here it's like the idea is that we played long enough the game that uh, sort of was uh, there when we came here. <laughs> And it's a process of uh, just acclimating towards game design, I guess, like so that we can, you know, renegotiate uh, rules, we can renegotiate roles, um, but also, you know, the objectives of the game: is there a winner? Is there a, a like? Is it an open game? Is it exploration? Is it whatever? So, like, that democratization of game design, I think, is what's at uh, stake here. Super nice. So, um, so one of the game that we're generating for ourselves uh, is the an archivist game, or uh, subtitled the artist formerly known as the audience, which can be interpreted in many ways. But it's it's a way of activating uh, what we call invested audience, and it was a uh, really playful and generative in many ways. So here are four fragments that were sent to us from the past. Uh, I will go through them really shortly uh, because we have a lot to, to deal with, but it's, it's, it's just so that you understand or feel that there is a, a sense of flow that is being generated within the Sphere Collective and that manifests itself in, in different ways. So here is a fragment that I personally uh, like a lot uh, from uh, Gayatri uh, that signals uh, towards the third lab uh, she, she writes, uh, Cosmo Commons to negotiate a multiverse for cultural sign codes, languages, futurity. Uh, it says on the top, I am a juggler, feel my politics, which that's the beauty here is that like there, if you attended the lab, well, there is a bit of an insight here because Jay Gilligan, the co-host of that lab, uh, talked about how uh, uh, he introduced himself as a juggler. That's his politics. You know, speaking from the space of juggling is his politics. So anyway, so that was one of the fragments, a beautiful uh, art, artsy one that uh, personally, like here I'm going to be super personal because I attended the Anarchive Lab and the fragments, they tell me a specific something. And in this case, this is opening up the, the, the future, the third lab that is about accounting otherwise and uh, how can we activate a gift ecology uh, for ourselves? So the differential and differential skin in the game, I would say, uh, is processed through the idea of uh, opening up the question of a gift ecology for our times. So these two uh, next fragments, um, uh, Joel, you, you correct me if I'm wrong, but these two fragments uh, that are a little bit, let's say, uh, um, closer to the movement of juggling itself, uh, were picked up by the jugglers while we were iterating and going back and forth between the performances that were happening in the space. So maybe I didn't say that before, but basically these fragments were generated while uh, there were uh, performances, juggling performances going on in Stockholm. People were attending online, started iterating, writing, uh, drawing stuff. And if I remember correctly, these two fragments, so one from Lenné and the other one from Gabriel, uh, were picked up uh, eventually and influenced the way that the, uh, the, the performance was going. As was the first one too. The uh, first one was picked up as well, huh? Okay. Like twice, and the first one was picked up twice actually. Okay, they okay. Kept coming back to it, yeah. So yeah, that's, you, anything else you'd like to say, Joel, about uh, about these uh, fragments, or Catherine, like anyone who was there, basically? Uh, you're muted, uh, Joel. Oh, just to say that it's a it's a lot about kind of uh, how how Jem took it right there to re retake up even like the uh, demand that. Uh, we design in a certain way, right? Or the demand that uh, a game means a certain kind of thing, even within the form of game studies. So breaking it down to be able to share in the benefit of 
kind of all the differential creation that can get, that can come, and then giving it longevity, memory, authority in the future, as in a kind of a people to come way, in a kind of a digital soul to come way. So this is kind of part of that. And and I anyway, so yeah, they all make their mark and continue to just like the fragments we're making today. So yeah. And the uh, the authority in the future that you're describing, I think, is is a super key element of what we like to describe as processual programming for ourselves as a collective, but also with for the type of uh, flow engineering of flows that we want to generate for the digital souls that will be uh, hatched uh, by by the sphere. So this is this is uh, what I yesterday I went rapidly about the tension, the creative tension between gestures and programs that we're playing with within the sphere. And that game design part where some fragments from the past have an authoritative or, or, or programmatic power over the future up to a certain extent, and always, of course, open to negotiation is part of the game that we're installing for ourselves here. And that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, very much welcome, uh, Joel. I had a, just a, in, in the similar in the similar sense, I felt like it. There's an iteration, an, a lot of iterative processing that was happening um, very quickly between, and one of the things that maybe works both with everything we talked about yesterday and this lab two weeks ago was how fast we can switch from risk management to abundance. Um, I've heard that in Spanish, instead of um, ret uh, retirement when people finish working, they talk about, they call it abundance. And I think this is the kind of the speed for me, and this is something I find in my improvisation practice, is how fast can you look at it differently? Wow. Um, and that seems to be a, a guide. It was a, certainly a guiding theme in the last week, and it seems to fit also with what you're saying. Yeah. I don't know if you agree. I mean, nicely, nicely said, Catherine, yeah. The, the perspective of abundance is definitely what is at stake for the, the next lab. Like when we talk about the gift ecology, it's predicated on a certain understanding of abundance, uh, most definitely. Or wealth and it's a uh, vermögen uh, and wealth well, as and I, Yeah, I had, I would, I would even go from the gift economy to a generous economy because I think gift is, is, is an object. Um, I'm, or the gifting would be, but generosity is, a, is an uh, état d'esprit. And uh -huh. I think it'd be interesting to think about, it, are we talking um, about what's being passed? Or are we talking about the way it's being passed? The, the spirit of speculative generosity, as we like to call it, uh, it's, it's exactly what we'd like to iterate around. So let's, uh, let's make sure you're part of the design if you're interested uh, for, for the next event. Um, so the last, uh, I, I'm going to, ex uh, so the last fragment, um, I really like it. So uh, another reason why I think it's important to start with uh, these fragments is because uh, the sphere as it exists is committed to uh, the, per the circus world and the performing arts. And uh, it makes no sense to create uh, some sort of new economic engine if we don't somehow really uh, let in the, the specific qualities of, of the circus and the performing arts world. And here in this fragment, there's something that I really appreciate that's very tangible, very practical. Like so, uh, often in finance, you have uh, uh, different uh, maxims, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know, uh, buy low, sell high. Or like this one is like, I guess the, the most boring one, uh, but like there's blood in the street. Or like they, 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 it's, it's known that finance functions through a, 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 a series of maxims, you know, or like that it, it, it coordinates itself around a series of maxims. And here there is one uh, that is for the jugglers. So it's a maxim that we've learned as we attended the rehearsal. And basically it is uh, about uh, like Jay, the way he presented it is like, okay, it's kind of a trick to attract the audience uh, um, attention. And it's basically high, low, fast, slow, to kind of like give a sense of all the possibilities that the juggling act will be exploring. So Teresa, who is a circus artist, picked up on it. So I really like this co-learning process here because she sees the importance of it, decides to make a fragment out of it, and she added a line of its own, a little bit like uh, uh, Confucius uh, added a line in um, 
in all of the I Ching, you know, the I Ching, the 64 figures of mutation of the universe, every figure has been commented by Confucius, a very short line, very minimalistic. And here, I feel like Teresa offered something similar. So it's written super small. I'm not even know. Okay, so she says, what if there was no gravity? My breath would go. So that's because of the, the, the moon setup. And then she goes, hi, my moves, my moves would go low. My eyeball would snap fast. Determination makes the go slow. Welcome mistakes, pause. Welcome mistakes, pause. Uh, the, um, I remember Teresa talking about the patrimony of error, which is like a kind of virtual institution that they have in their um, circus company, which is, I imagine, part of the process of learning to allow for errors to happen while learning a new act or like while juggling or doing circus or while living more generally. So allowing for errors to, to, to seep through. So I, I, I really like that fragment uh, and yeah. So a bit of co-learning with the, the circus performance itself. And now I will try to weave it with a couple of quotes uh, uh, that have been guiding me over the years now, over the last few years. Uh, and more specifically directed to the question of a social logic of the derivative, which is to frame it with the coordinates that we opened up yesterday, a way to um, bring in uh, a, 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 a mode of enjoyment uh, as, as we develop the, uh, like basically culture before structure, we need a culture that is generative, a spirit of speculative generosity that knows how to deal with abundance in order to generate the type of uh, vision that we're working with right now. So let me, I hope it's not gonna be too technical, but bear with me. So the fact that yesterday we generated or summoned a digital soul with Mil Tato, I thought was, <laughs> was quite cool. Uh, and, and basically the idea here is that you need to pr produce a membrane, you need to produce a circle, you need to wrap something up within which the, uh, to protect the germinal force, uh, forces of a task or a deed to do. So that, that initial gesture, I think, is very much financial in meaning, meaning that we need to wrap something up. We need to create a, a sense of inside and outside. The liquidity pool is not exclusive per se, but there's going to be people in that will stake themselves in, that will put differential skin in the game in, and they need to be protected properly. Like that's like a, a designer uh, question, I guess. And then one other thing that I really liked from that uh, quote is that while you're protecting uh, against the chaos to disturb, so it says uh, one opens the circle, not on the side where the old force of chaos press against it, but in another region, one created by the circle itself. So basically Deleuze and Gattari here are kind of giving a sense that as you are protecting something, and a, a, a co-immunity practice in becoming, there is a flow that's being generated. Like something's happening, some, some future is being called in basically, literally, which is extremely financial, I would say, as a dynamic. As though the circle tended of its own to open onto a future as a function of the working forces it shelters. So basically the future is already happening as you start protecting something. For, for yourself. So that movement that the future is constantly flowing in as you, 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 you create a membrane is I think very much at the heart of like, a, it's, a, it's an essential gesture, financial gesture that we're dealing with here. So I'm, I'm trying to define a little bit like a essential grammar that we can maybe work with uh, transversely for non-specialists. The, the, the similarity strikes me with, with um... Uh, Derrida's concept of circumcision and uh, the archive as a claim towards the future by exclusion, essentially, like to the membrane of on the knowledge realm, I guess. Yeah, a cut that allows for a, a, a specific future to open, if mm -hmm. I understand correctly. Yeah, for a sign. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Literally. 
Um, yeah, the semiotic of how we open the future, I think, is is uh, so key for for ourselves. Uh, okay, uh, maybe yeah. Uh, so I have I have three quotes basically: one from Hito Steyl, one by Jean Luc Nancy, and uh, a fragment by Randy Martin, the Prince of the Social Logic of the Derivative. Um, maybe I will start with Nancy here because it's more analytical. So he says in a, a beautiful book called uh, Being Singular Plural, he says that uh, it must be said that co-appearance might only be another name for capital. It must also be said then that the classic critique of capital, even in its latest post-Marxist forms, is not sufficient for taking hold of what capital exposes at the very least, a thinking of co-appearance must awaken this anxiety. I mean, for me, this is extremely generous and generative because thinking capital or thinking new types of capital formation or what we like to call digital souls, this is a quite precious fragment when it comes to understanding that capital or differential, having differential skin in the game means that we're exposing each other to, to something, to the future, to risk. We can keep it open, but that, that engagement to co-appear together, calling it capital, I don't know, I find it, uh, I find it fascinating. I find it generative and it, it, it speaks to what we're trying to, to do, I think. So this log logic that finance is about capturing value, but it's also about exposing value for further circulation. So it's a game of capture and exposure constantly. The second quote uh, is from Hito Steyl. And there you can see this game of capture and exposure uh, embodied uh, in a, a given image of thought of the art world itself. So, so which I think is important for the discussion we're going to have later on about the modes of funding or new ecologies of funding for the arts. It's good to have an image of thought of what the art world is or like the really existing art world so that we can imagine other configurations for it. So she says, how to make tangible the idea that belonging is in becoming, not in having been. She takes that specific formulation from uh, Brian Masumi. Art as an alternative currency shows that art sectors already constitute a maze of overlapping systems in which gold old, a good old gossip, greed, lofty ideals, inebriation, and ruthless competition form countless networked cliques. The core of its value is generated less by transaction than by endless negotiation. In contrast to cryptocurrencies, in art there is not the slightest pretense to decentralized transparency, nor the pretense to an automated, incorruptible set of functions. Art as currency gains its relative stability precisely because of non-transparency and because of its overwhelming reliance on human relations. So I don't know, for me, I like it because it, it brings a sense of uh, differential skin in the game as countless network cliques with their own self-understanding, with their own modes of, 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 of staking themselves into existence. It makes it quite concrete, I feel, uh, and when it comes to thinking art and finance together. Yeah, I'm really passionate about the per first, uh, like the, this uh, inversion of belonging uh, to um, like temporal inversion of belonging. Um, but funnily enough, I think the last paragraph uh, sort of, uh, uh, misses on the future <laughs> because uh, we're like that relative stability is uh, not permanent. It's, it's, it's uh, about to change <laughs> with some liquidity. Well, it's, we have it uh, recorded. I think I think it will be proven uh, <laughs> right. Hopefully. <laughs> Okay, last but not least is uh, like all, all these considerations and, and what Catherine was saying about uh, a, a spirit of generosity, generative speculative generosity. This is all uh, different dimensions uh, that I think uh, are, are embedded or that I would like to conceptualize through uh, what Randy Martin describes as the social logic of the derivative. 
So he has, it's, a, it's an extremely complex and, and rich preposition, but he's basically trying to show that the way that uh, really existing financial derivatives are kind of hovering over the real economy, so to speak, is actually an occasion to understand differently um, what we understand by, by economy, by commodification, by basically showing that derivatives are uh, essentially relational, uh, relational technique, uh, relational technology. So when we understand finance as a relational field or a relational scape, then we can start understanding better what happens between the different elements that are brought together. So he defines this augmented, fabulated, a social logic of the derivatives in different ways. He says, derivatives are reinvention of things for themselves into matter of interest to other, so addressed, of local capacities viewed from the perspective of global attentions, of future prospects seen as present opportunities. So here there's a real care for like, something happened in a certain context, you bring it in, it takes a new, it, it, it potentially takes a new value, a, a new mode of iteration because of the care of the address, because of the, the conveying, uh, like there's kind of a hallucinated market making here, or I, I'd rather say here, a playmaking, as we say in, in hockey or in football, like playmakers are people that will set up the game in a way that might lead to a goal, you know, to, to value. <laughs> but in, in the meantime, there are all sorts of processes going on and, and you need the playmakers in order to, to see and shift the context of iteration and see how things can maybe catalyze into new opportunities. And I see the sphere as doing that. Like part of the sphere is uh, a catalyzer for that type of, uh, of transmutation and, and transformation. If you still have a bit of patience to bear with me, I would add uh, uh, two more precision around this idea of the derivative coming from Randy Martin, and then and then would move on with the rest of the day. So um, uh, Randy Martin uh, then goes on and says, a derivative logic speaks to what is otherwise balefully named fragmentation, dispersion, or isolation. The specific engagements, commitments, and interventions we tender and expand might be interconnected without first or ultimately needing to appear as a single whole or a unity of practice or perspective. So there's a real almost celebration of uh, difference et répétition of like, there is, there is an essential multiplicity that we're working with here and uh, how to become, how, how, how to uh, come together with, without becoming one is one of the formulas that Randy Martin likes to play with. So the differential in differential skin in the game, that's, that's where I see it happening here. Oh, wow. And he also says, derivatives articulate what is made in motion, like pure an archive sentence here. Derivatives articulate what is made in motion, how production is inside circulation, and as such, how to notice the value of our work in the midst of volatility. Derivatives work through the agency of arbitrage, of small interventions that make significant differences, of a generative risk in the face of a generalized failure, but on behalf of desired ends. So this little minor vibration, minor agency, minor gestures that actually start resonating with one another. This is, I think, um, very, very close to what Joel has set in motion in the Anarchive Lab and something that I think seeps through the three labs that we're building, because this is the type of spirit that I think we all value uh, at, at the end of the day. These small variations that actually, uh, we don't know, might generate a tsunami uh, on the other side of the ocean. And uh, last uh, but not least, uh, the task here is to explore what social logic is disclosed through the derivative that would account for its expansion and impact beyond profit-taking exchanges or as a mere succession in an unbroken chain of ever more effective regimes of accumulation. Here, logic will need to be a point of departure, not closure or completion, a mode of account, a mode of telling and counting, 
hence a sensibility that draws things together in a particular way while moving beyond itself. This is this last sentence is so close to the poetry that Joel you bring in a constantly in an, in an infinite generative way. Like this sensibility that draws things together, but that knows that this drawing together is constantly gesturing beyond itself, moving beyond itself. And um, yeah, that, that last paragraph, I, I like it because it's, it's kind of like bringing back some uh, reality, uh, fanged reality back in the picture. Because I mean, we're talking about capital formation here. Uh, sorry, Joel, uh, you wanted to say something? Okay, I'm, no, gonna, I'm, good. No, no. Okay, Go I'm gonna end with that paragraph and, and we can open it up. Uh, so that, that uh, paragraph actually is the one that you had uh, called in when we were on a call uh, a, a few weeks ago. So capital accumulation has also generated an abundance of social relations, mutualities and encumbrances that it could not abide. It flees the socialities it engenders and moves towards those of which it wants but a part. The derivative is no different. It draws on all manners of value forms that are already in motion, if not already at hand. And I like that perspective from uh, an abundance that might be uh, somehow obfuscated or obscured. And, and I like that, that part that I said was a little bit fanged here is that capital, maybe that's what uh, Jem also you, you mean by market, it doesn't lie, it goes for what it's actually interested in. Capital moves away from the socialities that it has uh, depleted and look for new opportunities of self-reproduction. That would be like the dark uh, way of understanding capital movement. And I think like probably the most accurate one for most of what capital is about. But here we're maybe tweaking it and just understand that when we draw the circle that protects us for germinative forces to happen, these germinative forces will flee the socialities that they have generated up to a certain extent. They will leave some aside. They will generate, generate new bubbles, new digital souls, like new formations. And we need to, to, to follow that movement or, or be at least be uh, honest with that movement and, and hopefully maybe uh, inform each other of these movements as they happen uh, within our midst. Uh, yeah. Uh, Eric, in the slide before, um, I, I was thinking that Randy Martin was proposing uh, derivatives, an approach towards derivatives as uh, sort of a source for plurality, uh, which I thought was missing uh, the underlying logic uh, being the point of singularity among uh, all of them uh, or, or among that plurality. And then in the next slide, he actually addresses that where he uh, can we yeah. Here, logic will need to be a point of departure, not closure or completion, a mode of account, a means of telling and counting, hence a sensibility that draws things together in a particular way while moving beyond itself. The problem here, which I think you touched upon perfectly about self reproduction, self reproduction of signs and systems. So mm -hmm. the logic and counting is indifferent uh, to each other, right? Like the many, many issues, let's say that we have, it comes from uh, our systems only being uh, sentient towards numerical input, for example, like we can only understand value, uh, you know, in, in mechanic sense uh, by numbers, right? Like we a limited set of, uh, the characters that uh, you know uh, define the possibility space there, or like the, the way they relate to each other, etc. So, unless the method of counting or the method of accounting, or even like the logic of accounting, is uh, mutated, uh, I find you know the most essential layer uh, maintaining its singularity uh, there. But obviously, you know, like we are definitely. Um, in this realm where you know with these uh, primitives that we have numbers and uh, you know finance and uh, uh, value systems etc uh, we are trying to bring in uh, yeah the, the, the sociality dimension much more closer uh, in, in a networked sense to uh, the way capital expresses itself so 
which which I think opens up to a lot of mutations because it is not originally conceived as such, right? The, the original conception of finances uh, bringing future value, uh, time travel kind of time traveling black it, magic. It, it's it's time travel that is ordinated by price and 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 price discovery mechanism where. Uh, what you're suggesting here is 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 moving. I mean, in my terms, like moving from price uh, discovery mechanisms to uh, price uh, to to value discovery processes, where value is is something richer, uh, more differential than uh, than price itself. But at the same time, I mean, I want to be a realist here. Price is there for a reason. Like it it uh, it signals stuff. You know, it's like it it and it works. Signs uh, are there for a reason. Language is there for a reason. <laughs> Speaking in English here for a reason. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Yo, anyone else uh, want to jam uh, a bit uh, on these coordinates? I don't know if GN is Gerald Nesla, but if it's Gerald Nesla, I would love to have a bit of your of your insights on 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 that subject. And yeah, otherwise, anyone, uh, it's 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 open, huh? The um, allow error pause by Teresa uh, is now uh, living. Uh, <laughs> I'm checking game designer formerly knows and that they are nice. Checking the chat now. <laughs> I I'm not. It, I'm just gonna throw it out there because one of the. I remember when we were finishing the last lab, and Joel suggested we package our fragments for the future. And my first reaction was, I don't want to think about the future. Um, and I think that comes from my practices and the present moment. And I wonder, yeah, I just wanted to kind of throw that out because derivatives in a, in a purely financial stock market sense are banking on future always i yeah. think and so since we're always a little bit one of the ideas that came through also in the previous lab was this idea it was the first time that i really felt an, a collective possibility of the dream of having everybody having enough to live on and eat and sleep and it came from an understanding of for me it seemed like it would come from an understanding of being able to articulate what I need now in order to eat and sleep and live and not with this consistent swath of thirst towards having more, 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 which is kind of what derivatives do. So that was kind of my thought as you were reading. There's, a, there's the damnation of accumulation, I guess, that we've been living with uh, for the last uh, 300 years, perhaps it's almost uh, coincident. It, it coincides with modernity. Like we've created uh, engines of accumulation that no societies, no civilization before had created. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I think we don't know exactly how to dismantle them. Uh, we need to anarchive finance uh, and, and, and uh, it will have to happen from below, I guess, or like from from new uh, alliances, because uh, this machine seems to be really hard to to, to derail. Yeah, it might just... also be finding part. I'm sorry. No, please, Catherine. I was just thinking about finding partner partners. Um, there was a quote in a I don't know where, but somewhere in the last couple of months of a gallery in Paris, a guy who was just an absolute image of the art market as a capitalistic system and the whole mondanité, the whole, you know, all of that goes with the art market in its worst exhibitionism. And what he, he it was a quote about what he'd learned during COVID and, and you know, we would love what he said. <laughs> and it, I was reading it going, how is this possible? But it is possible that in one year you can change you know, it usually happens when somebody near you dies or you deal with a personal illness and you start to realize what life's really about. But it's be, it might be interesting in our investigations to bring people like that who have kind of had a, 
awakening for lack of a better word you know and just kind of use their it was something in the in the american political system that that you know the, the in a general way the republicans are were always seem to be using their smarts to do really smart bad things where the democrats were too nice to do use their smarts to do bad things and sometimes you have to really understand the system in ter- in order to turn it around and it, that mm-hmm. seems like what you're trying to do here and i wonder if there's i'm sure there are people in the room that know how to do these things better than artists so <laughs> There's one um, um, uh, yeah with Joel and and Lara and Sky we created a game a few years ago the interspecies token game and it was predicated on this idea by Yanis Varoufakis that in the world as it is only bankers have uh, the power to go in the future to bring back uh, tokens of value into the present and these tokens are very monodimensional like they're really like the money as it is. And what if we open the possibility space uh, for people to start bringing in their own uh, set of value into the present? So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 <laughs> it's a way, and I think we're living up to that. Uh, <laughs> it's been it's been four years almost, and I feel like the future is is, uh, is taking uh, more and more shape somehow. Joel, you want to jump in? Yeah, no, I was just going to. I'm just. I'm still thinking about the, the way that uh, Jen kind of uh, was taking your intro in terms of the kind of framing it in the game design space, and in terms of, uh, I guess, uh, describing a way that we design for ourselves kind of atmospheres for effective action within some kind of a set limitation within an understanding of um, what we can do. Um, and how we can even relearn effective action in that kind of, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a, a holodeck situation that designs its own ramp out of its own holodeck, you know? And so I just like that way of thinking. And I kept thinking at the end, and also this kind of, uh, which hooked into that Randy Martin quote at the end that, that also understands uh these systems exit them because they invite this information and use in you know these distributed systems we were talking about yesterday right where it's a lot about how many many people and things can impact it then it must take it beyond a game you know beyond uh even evolutionary games right and into the i guess what we in the end want is a kind of a refraction chamber for uncommon sensibility right the place where what's actually happening can be refracted and augmented inst- instead of, as you said, Jim, this kind of always playing by this other game, in which things are pre-muted, things are pre-augmented in a way that uh, um, is more about getting the, pulling the, va- the value out of us for someone else than it is um, about uh, allowing us to augment our own feelings and our own inter-participation. So I'm just kind of enjoying that part and enjoying the challenge to, game studies in, in one sense, you know, and, and, and it's kind of assumptions about information and about uh, about how it can operate in analogous to finance and, uh, and, li- and liking the feeling of where these games are taking us basically, you know, so just to say. Yeah, I think one, the challenge uh, that you described there, I think is the tension between um, the desire for, you know, renegotiation or, uh, um, uh, designing new games or uh, whatnot, or d- differential games, let's call it, uh, versus limited attention, uh, you know, limited aggregate attention, meaning that like the game needs players. And uh, if we all have games that we are super all passionate about, uh, no one is going to play anything because uh, we need to play each other's games. Otherwise, it's like an atomized, uh, you know, which is kind of uh, the, I guess, the capitalist games, like so the atomized, like you kind of start single player and, you know, you have to unlock these thresholds and accumulate eventually. Um, but yeah, there's still this tension that like, even if we go to a di- differential paradigm, uh, we have to convince each other that some some things are more worthy of uh, juggling than others perhaps or more fun or more whatever um and that's i think uh, 
an inherent tension that's like uh, stands in contrast to horizontality or like democratization uh, as their most naive interpretations. So, so, so. So that was uh, our, our, our first segment, I guess, uh, setting up. We keep on summoning the digital souls in different ways. Uh, and, and create a, a, a language and a grammar to understand a bit uh, how, because I, I, I trying here to really, yeah, I mean, these things are a bit uh, speculative and uh, not necessarily so easy to access, but I think we start to have a real jamming uh, power uh, within the sphere. And it's really a pleasure to, to try to represent it uh, uh, for, for, for others so that we can be more people in the liquidity pool, because that's uh, the end goal, basically to have better, richer parties. So on that note, uh, we're going to move to the second <laughs> session, which uh, is about how to get richer, more abundant parties uh, in the arts. <laughs>